Good morning, everyone. We acknowledge that the land upon which we reside is Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of the Cree people and the homeland of the Métis Nation. May the Creator grant healing and reconciliation to the whole community. We begin today with a penitential office. God of all mercy. We confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and raise you to new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. We gather in your presence, O God. In our need and bringing with us the needs of the world. We come to you, for you come to us in Jesus. 
and you know by experience what human life is like. We come with our faith and with our doubts. We come with our hopes and our fears. We come as we are because you invite us. And you have promised never to turn us away. Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of God. Give thanks for the remembrance of the holiness of God. For the wrath of God endures, but the twinkling of an eye, the divine favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. Lord, with your favor, you made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord, I pleaded with you saying, what profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Blessed be God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A reading from Second Kings uh, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. Man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes. He sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Parfum, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached him and said to him, 
Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. We call on the power of God to meet us in our helplessness. God in our thinking, God in our speaking. We call on the clarity of God to meet us in our confusion. God in our action, God in our stillness. We call on the mercy of God to meet us in our brokenness. God in our waking, God in our sleeping. We call on the Spirit of God to meet us in our division. God in our meeting, God in our parting. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Do you not know that in a race, the runners all compete, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win it. Athletes exercise self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable garland, but we an imperishable one. So I do not run aimlessly, nor do I box as though beating the air. I punish my body and enslave it, so that after proclaiming to others, I myself should not be disqualified. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebearers and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 40. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A leper came to him, begging him, and kneeling, he said to him, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately leprosy left him and he was clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country and people came to him from every corner. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, 
Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, maker, redeemer, and spirit. As the American Civil War came to a close, a soldier wrote this of his experience. I asked for strength, and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom, and God gave me problems to solve. I asked for prosperity, and God gave me brain and brawn to work. I asked for courage, and God gave me danger to overcome. I asked for love, and God gave me others to help. I asked for favors, and God gave me opportunities. I received nothing I wanted. I received everything I needed. Nothing I wanted and everything I needed. It could be Naaman's story. Naaman was as powerful as a five-star general, but Naaman was also a leper. Naaman's wife employed a young Jewish slave girl who one day happened to mention that back home, a prophet called Elisha had a cure for leprosy. With an introduction in his pocket and a pack full of cash and confidence, Naaman headed for Israel and the healing he thought he could procure from Elisha. The order to dunk himself seven times in the Jordan River was not what Naaman expected. Mumbling that rivers back home in Syria made the Jordan look like a muddy slough, Naaman did as he was told. Big wake generals seldom take orders, much less bathe in public. But Elisha's cure did the trick. When Naaman emerged dripping from the Jordan, his skin was so smooth and clear that he could have starred in an ad for Avino. Naaman received what he wanted. He was healed from the shame and the affliction of leprosy. But the healing did not happen as he expected it to. It came not on his terms, but on God's terms. Pride moved over to make room for humility and obedience. How is it that we wish to be healed in our own lives? What conditions and expectations do we put to God when we ask? For healing. When faced with chronic disease or life-threatening illness, usually we seek to be cured. But cure and healing are not interchangeable. You can experience remarkable healing in your life and still be living with the reality of pain and suffering. How ironic that Naaman, who so valued his power and prestige, was afflicted with a disease that manifested externally, isolating him from the very ones over whom his power and influence held sway. Yet the real sickness, what truly diminished his leadership, was internal, his pride in position and power. 
A cure from leprosy might have improved the fit of his uniform, but it could not make him a better leader. He had to take off those garments that signified rank and plunge into the Jordan just like anyone else. He had to become vulnerable to find healing. Wealth couldn't keep Naaman immune to diseases of the human condition. It took the help of a servant and a foreign prophet to help him find wholeness again. Sometimes our help comes from unexpected or even unwelcome places or persons whom we could never imagine would have anything to offer that we might need. Some years ago, a parish I know went through a similar experience. When I first knew them, they were a vibrant community with lots of young families. But within a year, all of that changed. Several families relocated, and there were the usual factors of folk dying off, coming and going. All at once, that parish was challenged financially and spiritually. Confidence waned low, as did attendance. Like Naaman, Relieved of the power of his uniform, that parish felt vulnerable. A new priest came and encouraged them to reach out to connect with their neighbors, and that helped. They discovered that when they risked a in a spirit of service to others, there was blessing. About that time, the priest brought to them a proposal to help them over their leadership hurdle. Church officers were weary, having served too long. The proposal came with a team of two appointed leaders from other area churches to work with the board in an advisory capacity for a couple of years. This would allow the parish to focus on vision for ministry, while the business of the parish was enabled by the presence of these outside supporters. Rural folks tend to be fiercely independent, so this approach met with resistance. Their self-esteem was already shaky without having to take help from outsiders. The priest could see the possibilities, yet understood their misgivings. She tried to pitch the idea that they'd be like cheerleaders, encouraging, empowering, and celebrating with them along the way. The two appointees brought needed skills and experience, but more importantly, they were kind and caring people committed to helping this parish thrive, not merely survive. Still, it was a blow to their pride, just as Naaman's healing was. It was a chance to find healing and new life for the parish, but the process came in a package they did not recognize or understand. Some thought that healing should mean going back to how things had been some 30 or 40 years before, when it seemed that everyone went to church. That was what they wanted. But God knew that what they needed was the support of a few faithful and gifted strangers to help them find their own healing. In the end, they were surprised 
just as Naaman was, that God's ways were not their ways, but that God's merciful love and power could take their frustration, their limitations, and discouragement and transform them into something new, turning their mourning into dancing and their weeping into joy. That community healed just as surely as morning follows night. Just as the healing touch of God reaches out to those who can name their need and let go of their wants. All of us are beggars, like the leper who came to Jesus for healing. It's not only our bodies that desire wholeness, whatever our infirmities may be, it's our souls. And so as we gather this week on Ash Wednesday to acknowledge our sin and our brokenness, we will ask God to cleanse our souls and we will trust God to give us exactly what we need. Let us ask Jesus, God with us, to touch our tattered hearts and weary souls with the grace of God's healing love, knowing that we will receive nothing that we want and everything that we need. Amen. We affirm our faith by saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and a great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Christ, our healer, by your wounds we are made whole. By your tears, sorrow is washed away. Come with kindness to those who need your touch today, your presence, or the knowledge that you remember them. You ask for what we have in order to nourish those we tend to forget. Wherever people hunger, in or out of our awareness. Lead us beyond sympathy to generosity, even if it hurts. Help us to become the change that is needed for the sake of others. We lift up the people of Myanmar, especially the Rohingya peoples, as well as those in camps in Syria and Yemen. We lift up those inhabiting parks and doorways in our own country. We give thanks, O oh God, for new housing initiatives in Regina and Saskatoon, but we know that they are not enough. This is not an issue of government jurisdiction. It is a matter of human compassion and need. Help us to be the change <clears throat> that is needed, O oh God. We pray for the divisions among us in regard to COVID-19, between those who want more restriction and those who wish none, between those awaiting vaccines and those who plan not to accept them, between those facing average vulnerability to this virus and those facing greater risk. Help us to listen to care and to act for the welfare of all. Let all political strategy be removed from the management of this disease in our province. Let the voices of physicians and infectious disease experts be heard. In your mercy, O oh God, hear our prayer. 
Christ, our liberator, the chains of death could not hold you. Yet imperialism, racism, sexism, and other false ideologies enslave your people. Where humanity cries out against humanity, and where nature mourns for its lost good, deliver us from evil, we pray. Stir up our wills and our resolve to work for your justice and stand with those who yearn for it. For all working on issues of climate change and social justice, we pray strength and hope. We pray that we might be counted among them. Loving Christ, we hold in your healing presence those who suffer pain or illness, together with their families and all who care for them. We remember David Edney undergoing cardiac surgery. We give thanks that Greg Vibert is so much improved. And for Jane Doolittle Veldi, as she continues to heal. We pray for your healing grace for all who are ill with COVID-19, especially in our hospitals. We pray for Melinda Walsh awaiting surgery on her knee. We pray for all the caregivers. We pray strength, courage, and hope, along with relief and the support they need for all those we hold in our hearts. Dear ones near and far, and those whose names we lift to you now in silence, but they are known to you. Be their comfort and give them your peace, we pray. We thank you for our Emmanuel community, for the work of our vestry, parochial committee, staff, volunteers, <laughs> and friends who assist us by recording songs and hymns that we miss singing together. We give thanks for all who send cards and letters or who reach out by telephone or email to keep us connected. As we move into Lent this next week, we pray for grace to listen, to discern, to grow and to act. For the courage to share this journey one with another us, O oh God, by your spirit, and draw us more deeply into the unity of purpose and understanding. Above all, keep us grateful for the communion we share in your name, and for your sake. Amen. 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 God of the outstretched hand, in Christ you are moved with anger and pity at a world which labels and rejects its children. Release us from the lie that we are born unclean and shape a new community where all may be accepted. Through Jesus Christ, the companion of lepers. Amen. Amen.
My friends, I don't know how many of you were singing along with those words, but one or two of you have shared that you've enjoyed that opportunity to have words before you and to be able to sing, even though it's odd to do it just on our own. But perhaps we'll adjust to that. Give us some feedback on how you experience this uh, sharing of a hymn at the end of our, our time of worship. And we'll uh, carry on doing this and see, see if it works for us. Just before the words of our final blessing, I would uh, just encourage you to consider joining us for a very brief Ash Wednesday observance this week at 7 p.m. The details about that will come to you in your Wednesday email. Uh, and we encourage you, if you can, to have a candle on hand uh, when we gather. And we assure you that we'll wrap up in time for you to then go to the second Zoom invitation for that night and uh, take part in the presentation that we're all anticipating from Graham George around exciting developments in, uh, in his life as a scientist. So that will be Ash Wednesday. But I want also to share with you some, uh, just a bit of news about next Sunday. The calendar would tell us that it is Lent 1, and so it will be. But for us at Emmanuel, we're going to celebrate a special service. We're going to call it Community Sunday. And here's something you've been waiting for. You're going to have an opportunity to view the parish profile that your parochial committee has labored over and poured all kinds of creativity into. We're going to do this, experience this, in the context of a very simple agape meal. Again, the details that you will need to have ahead of time will come to you with your email and your invitation. So do plan to be with us. You won't want to miss next Sunday. And now as we move into what remains of this day, may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love this day and always. Amen.